from a space ravager to an ancient shark god to an old guy in a hood. Okay, that's different. In Samaritan, a young boy learns that a superhero who was thought to have gone missing after an epic battle 20 years ago may in fact still be around. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're gonna get. Today we're gonna be talking about the new Amazon Prime movie, Samaritan, directed by Julius Avery, starring Sylvester Stallone as this withered old superhero, which I was interested in just because of that. Because it's Stallone, I thought it could be fun. This is all just gonna be my opinion of the movie, of course. If you've seen it, whatever your thoughts, positive or negative, let me know down in the comments below and we can talk about it down there and we're gonna remain spoiler free. So the biggest draw for me, and I think for most, if not all people, is Sylvester Stallone in this role. And he is very good here. I think there's a lot of things in this movie that do not live up to the potential that it had, but the acting is really good across the board. It's cool seeing Sly in a role like this as this grizzled, old, jaded man with this incredible power who befriends this kid, played by Javon Walton, who's also very good. And I thought they had good chemistry together. I enjoyed their relationship and their bonding. I really enjoyed watching him. He is a big part of the draw for this and a big part of the thing that people are gonna enjoy. Pilo Azbik, I'm not quite sure on the pronunciation for him, but uh, he was Euron Greyjoy in Game of Thrones as the villain. He's good as well, portraying this menacing evil guy. We'll talk more about the character later, but the acting is very good, especially from Sylvester Stallone. He was very fun to watch at all times. I wanted to see him unleash his inner superhero. And this movie has some really interesting ideas in it. First of all, this very gritty city and society where there's a, a lot of crime, a lot of poverty, a lot of issues, and you've got this retired old superhero who had this big clash with his brother 20 years ago is thought to be missing. Very, just, just from that alone, some cool concepts, cool things you could do with that. But then you get more into the details of who these superhuman people were and how, of course, some people are rooting for Samaritan to come back because he was the good guy who went around saving people and his brother Nemesis was the bad guy. But there are some people who see it another way, who see it as Nemesis was a guy who was punching up. He was hurting people, but he was hurting people who maybe deserved it and maybe he was doing it for the good of the city as a whole. It's like one character says, maybe Samaritan was just another cop who was just helping the rich. And then you mix that in with this kid, our main character, who is a good kid and worships Samaritan, but is learning at a very young age the burdens of a society like this and the, the corruption that surrounds him that he might have to do some bad shit just to be able to earn enough money for him and his mom to stay in their apartment. So this had a real chance to explore a lot of the moral grayness of something like this. Those ideas are really interesting, but I think the movie's biggest failing is that it doesn't capitalize on them nearly enough. I think it's mostly entertaining enough throughout. Kind of drags in the middle a little bit, but if you're there for Sylvester Stallone for this concept, it's okay at doing that for the most part. It's not horrible by any means. It's gonna be mostly entertaining, but those things that really could have elevated it to be a lot better, I just don't think it focuses on them enough. The villains are just generic evil assholes. As much as they say, like, we're on Nemesis' side, he was doing the right thing, we're gonna help the poor and take down the powerful for the sake of the city, you never actually buy that at all. It never feels like that. It doesn't feel like they have a legitimate plan here that could maybe be seen as good. No, they just seem like awful people through and through at all all times and even their plan it's very vague it doesn't go into detail it's just kind of like oh the city's in a financial crisis just because and that's how much detail you get about that and we're gonna take out the city's power and then i don't know very very vague to keep it light and keep it moving rather than actually exploring how and why the villains really think they're trying to make any kind of difference here when they're clearly just douchebags. And you could have gone into a lot more detail about the backstories of these two superhuman characters and how their ideals differed and how the clash between them came to be that could have been really interesting, but they just don't. And there is a certain 
detail about the plot that I predicted very early on, and that I think most people will honestly predict, that they treat like a gigantic reveal near the end. And that's not inherently a bad thing if something is predictable, because sometimes things are predictable because that's the route the story is clearly headed in. Like, that's where it makes sense to go and might even be a good idea. And I think this idea was a good one, but I think treating it like a surprise was a bad idea because it wasn't a surprise. It's the kind of idea that you could do something with if you actually do something with it. Like, if you reveal it in the middle of the movie and then make it the focus from then on out. But if you just treat it like a surprise at the end, you no longer have time to do anything with it, and it doesn't really even matter much. It adds a little bit to the message that they're going for, but ultimately to the story as it plays out, it barely even makes much of a difference. So that was another big wasted opportunity. So ultimately you've got this setup with this society and these characters and this backstory where you could really delve into some of the morally gray aspects and really differentiate yourself a lot from a lot of the other superhero properties that are out there, which I think it does okay with anyway, just with this setup of Sly as this aged superhero. It doesn't feel like just another Marvel or DC movie or anything. It feels like its own thing, but you could have done so much more with that. And what it ultimately amounts to is a very simple, those guys are assholes. If we beat them up, then the day is saved and just be good. Sure, I guess, fine could have been so much more. The action is fine, there's not a ton of it, and what little is there is not incredible or anything, but it's totally serviceable, it's fine, it's mostly Stallone just effortlessly knocking the shit out of dudes because he's super strong, and that's fun enough. I really think it should have gone a lot grittier. It feels a little bit confused, because you've got this main character who's a child, and it ultimately amounts to being a very simple execution of this plot and these messages. So it feels like they want kids to be able to enjoy it, but they also have these deeper ideas scratching there, trying to break free through the surface, and they just never quite do. And so it feels kind of confused. It feels like they should have gone for that R rating and made it really gritty, leaned into that, but... I guess that just clashed with the child main character that they wanted. Visually, I mostly like the look of the way this city feels so run down and everything. Towards the end, there are some effects. I don't know what the deal is with fire, but like, I feel like every movie I've seen lately where there's fire, it just looks so bad. It just looks like they're on a green screen. It, it looks terrible, and it's always in the climax. This, it just happened in The Invitation, which I also just reviewed. Fire in the climax. It always makes the climax look awful. Stop. No more fire. Just ever again, unless you're actually lighting shit on fire. I don't want to see fake fire ever again. Anyway, it's the kind of movie that is perfect for Amazon Prime. You just throw it on to kill some time, and then you forget about it, ultimately. If you're a fan of Stallone, if you're a fan of this premise, you want to see him in a role like this. I think it will mostly entertain. I'm not going to go out of my way to recommend it, but if you are really interested in it for that, it will deliver on that enough. But keep your expectations low, because I think it fails to deliver a lot of what it had the potential to. Ultimately, I think I'm going to give Samaritan five pieces of chocolate out of 10. It's closer to a six. It's like a high five, almost there. But that's about where it lands for me. And that's all I have to say about that. But if you've seen Samaritan, leave your thoughts down in the comments. If you liked it more than I did, if you were really entertained by Stallone, if you thought it was boring, if you thought that it missed out on a lot of its opportunities like I did, whatever you thought, leave them down in the comments. Check out my review of The Invitation. This movie's definitely better than that one. I got a lot more coming, new movies, old movies. There's gonna be a lot coming to this channel in September and October, so stay tuned. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one.